Hi everyone, welcome back to Feeding Raven Doodles, a pet parent's guide to nutrition. Today's topic is vomiting and regurgitation. Now, I know it's not a pleasant topic, but it is a very important one. There are many reasons that dogs and cats may vomit and regurgitate, and it's important for pet owners to understand what vomiting and regurgitation are, how to tell them apart, and when to seek veterinary care. First, we need to differentiate vomiting from regurgitation. Vomiting is an active process in which the pet has abdominal effort and heaves before expelling the vomitus. Vomitus may include gastric and intestinal contents, and it may contain bile. Typically, with vomit, the food is partially digested. With regurgitation, on the other hand, it is a passive process. There is no abdominal effort involved, and it may be sudden. The pet might simply take a bite of food, turn around, and expel that food right away with no abdominal effort and no heaving. The same can be said for water. Regurgitation usually involves esophageal and gastric contents. It does not contain bile, and typically the food is re relatively undigested as it hasn't been subjected to a long period of time in the stomach or hasn't moved on into the intestines. Now out of the many different reasons for vomiting, the dietary causes seem to be the most common especially in pets that gorge on their food. So in a previous video, we talked about food gorging where pets eat too much too quickly and they vomit uh, soon afterwards because their stomach is just so full. Um, and you can check that video out if you wanna learn more. Another dietary cause of vomiting is dietary indiscretion. So the pet has gotten into something that it normally wouldn't eat like the trash or another pet's food, or maybe he even got a treat that he's not used to eating. And so this causes vomiting. Dietary indiscretion is a very, very cause of vomiting um, and a common reason that um, dogs usually uh, go and see the veterinarian. Now a dietary sensitivity is another reason for vomiting. Um, and a dietary sensitivity can be anything from an adverse reaction to food, to a food intolerance, to a food allergy. And so to learn more about all of these things, you can check out my video, Food Allergies. Gastrointestinal causes of vomiting include things that happen in the digestive system, so the stomach and the intestines. One common reason that dogs and sometimes cats vomit is due to the condition called bilious vomiting syndrome. And this is where a pet has not eaten for several hours and is expecting a meal and therefore they vomit bile. And this is actually one of the um, easiest to diagnose and manage uh, reasons for vomiting. And so if this uh, condition may, might pertain to your pet, you should definitely ask their veterinarian about it. Another reason for vomiting uh, could be a foreign body. So foreign material, something that's not food, ends up in the digestive tract. And it's often a bone, a toy, a stick, or something else in the home that the pet wasn't supposed to eat. Foreign bodies can cause obstructions, perforations, and intussusceptions. And typically foreign bodies are serious and they do require surgery to remove. Gastroenteritis is another condition that can cause vomiting. Gastroenteritis literally means inflammation of the stomach and intestines, and it causes discomfort and subsequent vomiting. There are many different reasons for gastroenteritis, and uh, you do need to see a veterinarian so that they can diagnose and treat your pet. Gastric ulcers can also cause vomiting. Gastric ulcers form when there is a pH imbalance in the stomach, leading to increased acidity and tissue damage, and once again, this causes discomfort and vomiting. Motility disorders are another reason that dogs and cats might vomit. 
Motility means that, um, motility disorder means that there's something wrong with the movement of the stomach and the intestines. So they're not moving properly. They're not moving food the way that they should. And so a motility disorder can mean that the stomach is not emptying properly or the intestines are not moving food along properly. And with a motility disorder, the food can back up into the stomach and have nowhere to go and therefore it causes vomiting. One other thing that doesn't necessarily cause vomiting, but it might cause retching, is GDV, or gastric dilatation volvulus. And we did talk about this in my previous video, canine bloat. Um, but GDV is um, basically where the stomach fills with food and gas, and it becomes so large and distended that the dog is actually unable to vomit. And so they might retch, but nothing comes up. GDV is severe and it can be life-threatening and it does require an emergency veterinary visit. So if you want to learn more about GDV, check out my video canine bloat. There are many foods, plants, drugs, and household items that are potentially poisonous to our pets when they're ingested and they may cause vomiting. And to learn more about these household items and foods, you can check out my video, What Not to Feed Unsafe Foods for Pets. There are also many medications that can cause uh, GI upset and therefore vomiting. You should never give any medication to your pet unless it is prescribed by their usual veterinarian. There are several medications, though, that your pet might be prescribed, um, such as NSAIDs or chemotherapy that can cause nausea and vomiting. So if you do see any vomiting or nausea associated with any drugs, you should definitely talk to your pet's usual veterinarian to see how they might want to manage this. One infectious cause of vomiting might include parasites. So gastrointestinal parasites like worms can cause vomiting and diarrhea. It's very important to keep our pets up to date on dewormers and to have their feces tested yearly by the veterinarian. Another cause of vomiting is canine parvovirus, which is a life-threatening illness that usually affects puppies and unvaccinated dogs. Parvovirus is spread by unvaccinated adult dogs, and it can cause vomiting, diarrhea, weakness, and lethargy in the unvaccinated puppies and eventually death. It's very hard to treat, and that's why most unvaccinated puppies end up passing from this condition. And therefore, it's very important to vaccinate our adult dogs and puppies when they're old enough to reduce the spread of this serious disease. Now, there are also some systemic causes of vomiting, and this just means whole body causes. So they're not concentrated to the digestive system or they're not for a toxic reason. So one very common systemic cause of vomiting is stress. So something stressful happens, a pet is taken to a place they're not used to, or maybe they're left alone and they, they get um, separation anxiety, things like that. Um, otherwise, there are some endocrinopathies that might cause vomiting, such as adrenal or thyroid disorders. There are neoplastic causes, so any type of cancer can cause vomiting and nausea. Renal causes, so acute or chronic kidney disease. Hepatic causes, so any type of liver disease because that can cause digestive upset and vomiting and other systemic issues. And then another common cause of vomiting is pancreatitis, which is inflammation of the organ called the pancreas, and it can cause severe digestive upset and other systemic issues and can be a life-threatening condition as well. The pharynx is a space in basically the back of the mouth or the throat where air and food can pass through. And so um, when your pet is breathing, the air goes through the pharynx and into the trachea. And when the pet is swallowing, 
the food goes through the pharynx and into the esophagus. And so there are several types of pharyngeal disorders that can cause regurgitation. One of those disorders is cranial nerve disease. So any damage to the nerves that control swallowing in the pharynx. Other disorders can include motility disorders. So anything that damages the muscles that contribute to swallowing. And again, foreign bodies can cause regurgitation. So any foreign body in the pharynx um, that gets caught up in there and inhibits swallowing, that can cause regurgitation. One of the more common causes of regurgitation is esophagitis. So esophagitis just means inflammation of the esophagus, the tube that leads from the mouth to the stomach. One cause of esophagitis is anesthetic associated reflux. And basically this is where when a pet is undergoing a normal anesthetic procedure like a dental or a spay or a neuter, the animal might regurgitate some of their stomach contents into the esophagus. And this causes irritation of the inner lining of the esophagus. So the next time the animal goes to swallow, it causes more irritation and pain and therefore they regurgitate and it's kind of a vicious cycle. Now, anesthetic and uh, associated reflux is very common, but there are many ways that veterinary practices um, can prevent this. And so um, you can ask your pet's usual veterinarian when they are undergoing anesthesia, what the practice is doing to prevent uh, anesthetic associated reflux. Another cause of esophagitis is irrit irritants that are ingested. So like I mentioned previously in the toxic part of vomiting causes, there are many drugs or toxins that can also be irritating to the esophagus when they're ingested and thus cause esophagitis and regurgitation. Again, it's important not to administer any medications to your pet without first consulting their usual veterinarian. And you should always seek veterinary attention if you notice that your pet swallowed a known toxin. Another cause of regurgitation that has to do with the esophagus is a vascular ring anomaly. A vascular ring anomaly basically means that there is an abnormal ring of vasculature or blood vessel that shouldn't be there, that's constricting the esophagus. And a persistent right aortic arch, or a PRAA, is the most common vascular ring anomaly of animals. So pets with this condition regurgitate because their esophagus is being constricted at the level of the heart from the outside by that vascular ring. And so since it's being constricted, the food kind of bunches up right behind it, and then the pet regurgitates because it can't pass through the vascular ring. This condition can look like megaesophagus, which we'll talk about next, but the treatment is quite different. So megaesophagus is the most common cause of regurgitation in animals. And there are several causes of megaesophagus, from congenital, um, meaning that the animal was born with it, to acquired, meaning the animal develops a disease later on in life that causes megaesophagus. And so depending on the cause, the treatment of megaesophagus can vary widely. But essentially, megaesophagus is where the muscles of the esophagus, so it should be a, a nice, thin, smooth tube that leads all the way down to the stomach. They, those muscles actually stretch out and they're not able to contract like they should, so they can't push that food along. And so the esophagus goes from a thin, smooth tube to a very stretchy, uh, kind of like a balloon and all the food just backs up in the esophagus and so the food can't pass to the stomach and therefore the pet will regurgitate. Another reason pets might regurgitate is due to an esophageal stricture and so this is caused by an insult to the inner lining of the esophagus again most typically esophagitis and so if the damage of the uh, esophagitis is severe enough the esophagus um, lining might become very narrowed from scar tissue. And so it's not being constricted from the outside like with a vascular ring anomaly, it's being constricted from the inside because of inflammation and scar tissue. 
And so this is going to prevent the food from passing into the stomach and therefore the pet will regurgitate. One more very common cause of regurgitation in pets is an esophageal obstruction. So this can be due to a foreign body, once again, um, that's a very common cause. And when this is obviously, like I mentioned previously, when something that's not food becomes lodged in the esophagus and prevents that food material from passing. And esophageal obstructions can be very serious and they can cause severe damage to the inside of the esophagus, esophagitis, and they may require surgery to remove that offending item. Other types of esophageal obstructions can be caused by something that's compressing the esophagus from the outside, such as a mass or an enlarged lymph node in the chest cavity. There are a couple of gastric causes of regurgitation as well, so things that have to do with the stomach. One of these is a diaphragmatic hernia, and this is where the contents of the abdomen, so the organs that are supposed to live in the abdomen, have um, pushed through the diaphragm, which is that separation between the thorax and the diaphragm. And so there's a hole in the diaphragm, and so those organs have come up through the hole, and they've entered the chest cavity, where the lungs and the heart are supposed to live. And so because the organs are out of place, the stomach contents can be refluxed into the, um, I'm sorry, the stomach contents can be refluxed into the esophagus and um, causing regurgitation because the sphincter between the esophagus and the stomach isn't working quite properly. Another ca uh, gastric cause of regurgitation is gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. And yes, this does happen to pets, just like it happens with people. So in this condition, the stomach contents are refluxed into the esophagus, causing irritation, esophagitis, and pain on swallowing. Therefore, it causes more irritation and regurgitation and more irritation and regurgitation. It's a vicious cycle. Um, and GERD can be managed very well medically um, in pets, just like it can be with humans. Now there are several consequences of prolonged vomiting and regurgitation. So this is basically chronic vomiting and chronic regurgitation. These consequences can include weight loss and loss of body condition, nutrient deficiencies, acid base imbalances, dehydration, and aspiration pneumonia. So if your pet has a chronic vomiting or regurgitation um, disorder, um, that has not yet been diagnosed by the veterinarian, you're definitely going to want to seek veterinarian attention straight away. Like I just mentioned, if your pet is chronically vomiting or regurgitating, you're definitely going to want to see the veterinarian. Chronic just means that it happens for a long period of time, so it doesn't mean that it has to happen every day. Um, it could happen twice one day, wait a few days, happen again and then happen three times the next day or the pet might regurgitate every meal. Um, so this is a chronic condition. Um, likewise, if your pet is vomiting or regurgitating more than once in a short time period, like in the span of one day, your pet vomits three times, that's another reason to see the veterinarian. Another reason is if there's any blood in the vomit or the regurgitated material. That's a definite reason to see the veterinarian. And if your pet is vomiting and regurgitating and, or regurgitating and it's accompanied by other signs of illness like collapse, lethargy, a behavioral change, difficulty breathing, or any other signs of illness, those are other reasons to go and see the veterinarian. And yet another reason is when you know or suspect that your pet ate something it shouldn't have, like if it's a toxin or if the pet got into the garbage. Um, and this is even if the pet isn't actively vomiting. So if you saw the pet eat an entire bag of cat food, um, then it's probably a good uh, idea to go see the veterinarian and maybe they can induce vomiting um, so that the pet doesn't get sick from that. Thank you so much for watching this quick tips video on vomiting and regurgitation.
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends if you enjoyed this video. Leave comments down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. And check out the video's description where I give you a bunch of resources that I use to create this video. Don't forget to visit feedingravendoodles.com where I give you access to all my articles, videos, and resources all in one place just for you. Next time, we're going to be talking about how kibble is made. You gonna say bye, Raven? <laughs>